What better way to start 2014 than with a brand new series of Bike World? And with torrential rain and gale force winds here in the UK, we thought we'd kick off the year by heading out to sunny Spain. Coming up on the show, we find out exactly what the guys at Speedycom have done to our track bike. Plus, we get a certain Mr. Neil Hodgson to give it a shakedown. Plus, we catch up with a mysterious celebrity guest and we'll take a look at a whole range of waterproof boots to keep you dry in 2014. But first, it's time for us to head to Almeria. The idea is actually quite simple. It's to provide you with the ultimate track day experience with one of the best circuits in Europe, guaranteed sunny weather and a certain Mr. Neil Hodgson. Now you're probably thinking, well, European track days, Luke, are all well and good, but how about getting all your stuff out there? You've got your bike, you might have your toolkit, your riding gear, and much, much more. Well, that's where Focused Events have got this whole thing covered, because they will actually come along and pick up your bike, toolkit, and gear from a number of UK tracks. Alternatively, you could drop all of this stuff off at Focused Events head office, and they'll make sure it gets out to Spain on the back of one of their lorries. So the only thing you actually have to worry about sorting out are your flights to the actual track. Now, for us being at Almeria, we could fly directly to Almeria Airport on a return with a certain cheap airline for under 70 quid. So that's an absolute bargain. Now, we actually arrived halfway through the three-day event just to get one day on track, and that meant that by the time we turned up in the evening at the hotel, it was awesome because you had all the people who were on the track day staying in the same hotel, in the hotel bar, having banter about the day's riding, exchanging advice, and passing on tips about the track. So we awoke fresh and early the next morning, and after a hearty breakfast, we met up with the rest of the lads who'd be accompanying us in the van to the track. It's only about a half-hour drive, but once again, Focus Events take care of it all, and you don't have to worry about any hire cars or anything because they'll take you directly to the track and back to the hotel at the end of the day. So with the banter flowing fast in the van, I must admit I was getting quite excited because the great thing about a Focused Events exclusive track day event like this is that it's an open pit lane. Now, if you've gone on a normal track day, you'll know you normally have about five 20 minute sessions to allow everyone to get out on the track. An open pit lane means that you probably have about between 20 and 30 bikes and riders on the track and you have access to track all day. Now, before we could head out on track and have some fun, we had to go and collect our gear and check it was all there. And for us, that meant my beautiful, wonderful track bike, a new set of tires, and all my riding gear. And thank goodness, they arrived safe and sound. Now, you can probably tell, actually, the bike's had a bit of work done on it since we were last visiting the guys at Speedycom. So I thought I'd catch up with the main man, Ian himself, at the NEC at Motorcycle Life to find out exactly what they've done to our machine. <laughs> So Ian, last time we came down to you at Speedycom, you worked on a comfort package for the bike, but you've had the bike for a while now, and you've been working on some performance parts, haven't you? Yes, we initially started with the MWR air filter. An extremely well proven air filter, it's actually won in the World Championships. Yeah, Tom Sykes actually won in the World Superbikes, and in the British Championships we have Alex Lowe's, amongst other championships that have been won by that particular filter. So that's not a bad product for me, old Muggins here, to have in his little track bike, but it's got a bit of a unique feature, isn't it? With like a little, it looks like almost a spoiler on it. Yes, what, what the actual filter has is a deflector plate. That deflector plate not only works as a baffle plate to, to get for the DB level of the machine on, on an open circuit, but also deflects the air so the airflow works with the fuel with the injector rather than a standard filter which where the air airflow will actually blow the fuel away between the injector and the bell mouth so you'll consequently gain more power through that air filter. Okay, so that's increased power through the air filter, but what about the exhaust? You've made a change there as well, haven't you? Yes, well, we actually removed the exhaust you came with the machine originally, and then we fitted an exit exhaust. The ex exit exhaust is a company that's been manufacturing exhaust since '96, and it's relatively new to the UK. The exhaust itself is actually a high-flow exhaust, a race exhaust. Also, when you weighed in the, sh in the showroom, when we weighed it, and we did the work, you found that this exhaust will also give you a weight advantage. In addition, we've actually removed the ser servo motor. The servo motor weighed um, a fair old amount of weight when we weighed it initially, and then we've replaced it with what we call the servo body. The reason for that is that the fault light would appear on your dashboard, and the dashboard then would send a signal to the ECU, which could potentially put your bike into a default mode. By putting the servo body in, you've actually removed, you've removed the weight, you've removed the cables from the machine, and really it just works purely as a noise suppression valve on your bike. So all these bits are making it go faster. What about stopping? Oh, stopping obviously a vital part of being on a track day. Now, the machine you brought in was an 08 bike. That makes the brake lines five years old. Now, over a period of time, rubber perishes and the efficiency of the brakes will very much diminish. You have radial calipers and radial master cylinder 
but you had a bit of a weak point between the two. So as a result, we fitted you a set of held brake lines. We fitted them in a race setup to give you direct feed from the master cylinder down to your brake lines. That will give you the best possible braking within the equipment that you have. And they're luminous orange, which I like. Oh yes, luminous orange, suited your bike. Now one other thing you uh, fitted that's very small but will help us a lot in the pit lane was the captive spacers, weren't they? Yes, the captive spacers are a unique little gadget which will save you so much time in the paddock and frustration come to that. When you're actually changing wheels, the captive spacers have a little small rim which allows the uh, spacer to be held in by the rubber seal on each of the wheel bearings. So when you're changing your wheels, there's not, a, not quite as much of a problem, shall we say, yeah. when actually holding the spacers in position to allow you to put the spindle through. Now Ian, that's not all. You actually had a little play and changed the ECU system, didn't you? Yes, once we've actually put the filter, the filter uh, in and the exhaust, you've got air coming in a lot quicker in a lot more efficient manner, and you've got the exhaust gases coming out a lot quicker as well. So in between that, you have to create your fueling. From a fueling point of view, we fitted one of the Bazaz units, which was supplied to us with JTEC Sports. We fitted it, it was a standard unit, and then obviously went to the dyno. The guys at FBM at the dyno, we actually initially ran it. The standard setting was 109 brake. Once we'd worked from there with just the equipment we put on, it went to about 11 and a half. At 111 and a half, we then started the dyno work, which with the Bazaz brought us to 116.5. And for the year of the bike and for the uh, condition and what we've done with it is a very good figure. So with the bike ready to go and with the sun shining, it was time to head off to our morning briefing hosted by a certain Mr. Steve Plater and former world superbike champion, Neil Hodgson. Now one of the cool parts of the package is that focused events will actually fit a transponder to your bike to give them loads of data about your time on track. So once we got that done, there were no more excuses. It was finally time for me to hit the Almeria circuit. <laughs> Now loads of people have been telling me that Almeria is a circuit can take up to a day to learn, so I thought the first thing I should do is head out with one of the instructors, Brian, and see if he could show me the basic racing line. Now the track itself I thought was awesome, Almeria really flows, while it has one of the longest back straights ever, where you probably get up into six gear on a 600cc bike, it's also got some of the most intricate technical corners I've ever faced, and it is a circuit you really need to learn, because if you mess up one corner, you find yourself really suffering about five corners down the line. So after I had some fun out on track with Brian, and felt that I got a little bit of a feeling of the actual circuit itself, it was time to have a chat with the founder of Focused Events, Kevin Healy, and the operations manager on the day, Steve Plater, to find out exactly what makes this such a unique event. So Kevin, first up, thank you so much for having us along at this special event at Almeria. Now, what is it that makes this so special, if you know what I mean? Uh, I think, you know, for, for the customers who want to ride in Europe, uh, obviously they can come over here and they can do a three or four day event with us and the pit lane could have maybe 90 or 110 people in it. But this way, there's only 30, it's an open pit lane, it's very exclusive. We bring Neil Hodgson along, he's their instructor for the, for the three days. Um, and it's like a really nice tight community and just relaxed and go out there and it will feel like it's your own racetrack. For me as well, obviously new to Amaria, it's been brilliant because it's a case of, I know we haven't been here for the whole three days, but going out there, steadily learning the track, there's no pressure on you. Yeah, we're trying to help the rider understand the circuit more. Uh, and if he's out there in this, this type of environment, he really isn't pressurised into, I've got to be ready in 30 minutes or I've got to be ready in 15 minutes. Almeria now is our base. It's our home when it comes to European events. So, you know, we've got workshops here. We've shown you the man cave <laughs> earlier today where everything a man in theory would want with loads of motorcycles. Um, people can keep their bikes over here. We've got a workshop here. Um, and we just, we, we know the area really well, which is why we do so many days here every year. And I think it's important to touch on the fact that, you know, you don't have to be an absolute expert to come in and get the most out of it. You've got people here who are doing their first track day. You've got yeah. people here who are testing to look at racing in Superstock next year. There's a complete spectrum, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and then the most important thing as well is that everybody is here to be in a holiday environment and keep each other safe and look after, look after each other on the circuit and be relaxed, you know. And we've got a great team, uh, especially with Neil. Neil has, has worked with us now for, I think, three, three years, going to our fourth year next year with Neil. 
Uh, I've got one of the most experienced and likeable guys um, that you could ever have in your pit lane running and, and managing the events with Steve here standing beside me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a big, it's a big friendly family. You know, of course we are here to look after people's safety, so when it comes to the rules, there are rules and we run those rules tight. I mean, let's talk about Almira as a circuit for a bit because it's pretty awesome. You know, you've got obviously the ridiculously long back straight, which pretty much anyone's going to get into top gear on and give it some, but it's yeah. also very technical and very flowing through the twisty bits. Yeah, I think the circuit the circuit was designed by the Garcia family uh, about 15 years ago. Now the MotoGP teams come here, Moto2 teams will come here, Moto3 teams come here, some will be based here, BSB teams. We are doing the very first proper official BSB launch, so we're working with Stuart Higgs and MSVR uh, to run the first BSB European test here at Almeria. So this circuit's got everything to offer. So Steve, just talking to you, obviously you are involved in running the day-to-day -day of the track day. I mean, apart from walking around on the clipboard and walkie-talkie, what does that actually involve? For me, you know, uh, it's to take the pressure off all the guys that are here to enjoy the track time. Um, up to 120 people uh, on, say, a four-day event. So kind of take the pressure away from them, get them signed on, make sure they're covered safely with insurance and things. Um, bring them through, give them a good briefing, make sure they're nice and calm and relaxed and look after themselves and their machines before they go out on circuit to enjoy um, a good test to end there on a circuit. Welcome to Geared Up, the section of the show where we look at the latest biking gear, gadgets and innovations from the shelves here at JNS Accessories. Now with December having been the wettest month ever on record here in the UK and with no sign of this wet deluge ever letting up, we thought it'd be a good idea to look at some waterproof boots for you. So let's start off with a decent budget option, costing just £59.99. These are JNS's very own Hydro Tour boot and they actually pack in a lot of the features you'll find in some more expensive boots just without the fancy label. For instance, you've got your gear change, bit of protection here, you've got an anti-slip sole, it's made of textile and leather mix, plus it's got really good all-round protection in the ankles and in the toes. Now in the just under £100 bracket we have these, the BKS Thunderboot. Now these bad boys are 100% waterproof, made from full grain leather, have a heavy duty zip and velcro to fasten the side of the boot and they have an Airtex liner. And now for something completely different, how about these? TCX's new X-Wrap boot, unveiled at Motorcycle Live at the NEC. I love these because you could pass them off as casual trainers, yet not only are they 100% waterproof, they also have loads of added protection in around the toes, the ankles and on the sole. But Honestly, if you turned up at the pub, you wouldn't know you were wearing a motorcycle boot. Now these will set you back 129.99, but they do do an X Street version of them, which are very similar, just not quite as chic, and they're 99.99. So those are a selection of boots at the more budget end of the market, all for under 130 pounds. But let's move things on a little bit now and start looking at slightly more expensive ones, starting off with this, the W2 Adventure Boot. Now these boots would suit you if you were looking to do maybe some off-roading as well as some heavy duty touring. And they come with a waterproof membrane, as you can see, some adjustable straps, some heavy duty protection if you did want to go off road instead of just riding around the M25 and they'll cost you $169.99. Now for the same price but with more of a road focus we have these, the IXS Maddox boot. Now these come with a Gore-Tex membrane, loads of good protection as you would expect in a boot this expensive, plus they will actually fit under your jeans unlike the W2 so a little bit more subtle. At the same price but designed for road and track use, obviously a much sportier boot are these, the Alpine Stars SMX WP5. Now these come with the usual Alpine Stars protection, they are CE certified, they have a polyamide lining, waterproof membrane, replaceable toe slider and as I mentioned they're the same price bracket as the others at £169.99 and these are super comfy. How about if money is no object? Well, if you want a true world conquering all round a kind of off-road touring boot, I'd recommend these, the TCX Desert Gore-Tex. Now these are the real deal. They come with an incredible amount of protection around the ankles, shins and toe. But one of the really cool things about these is they're actually designed to cocoon your feet using a Gore-Tex membrane and elasticated top to stop the rain getting in. So these are really, really dry. They've also got adjustable straps, non-slip sole, reflective panelling, and they look the part, but they should do because they cost you 260 quid. And finally, we have our most expensive boot, the Daytona Roadster GTX. These come packed with full of the latest features. We've talked about some really good protection around the toes, ankles, and shins. Well, these also have a Gore-Tex membrane, and what I like is that these are made from a hydrophobic cow leather, which means the leather's been treated to actually be water resistance itself. And along with the Gore-Tex membrane, it should guarantee your feet stay completely dry, but you'd expect that because they cost a whopping 360 pounds. So there you have it. That's our look at a really good range of waterproof boots for 2014 for you during these, well, rather wet months. But as always, give us feedback on the boots that you wear and if you think we've missed any out that we should mention, let us know on our forum at bikeworld.co.uk.
So after another session out on track, we thought we'd take a break to get some lunch. And well, you wouldn't believe who we bumped into. So it's amazing who you can find on these track days. With me now is the international man of mystery and YouTube sensation, Baron Von Grumble. Um, Hello, for the start. Hello, young man. We obviously have to keep the helmet on because if people who knew who you were, it would ruin everything, wouldn't it? Well, they'd find out I'm devastatingly handsome and uh, I don't think the wife could handle it. It's true, and it'd make me look incredibly ugly standing next to him. But uh, listen, your YouTube channel has over 50,000 subscribers. Uh, describe it to someone that may not have seen it. Um, describing it to someone that may not have seen it. Well, I guess if you like miserable people that moan about stuff, uh, then you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, I basically, I wear a helmet camera on the way to work and mainly it started just to cure boredom from like the rides in and stuff. And uh, I just choose things to moan about as and when they occur. Normally taxi drivers, all sorts of London commute fuzz going on, but yeah, it's, uh, that's basically it. How did, uh, how did it, the idea come about? I mean, did you literally just think, oh, I'll put up a video with me having a bit of a moan on it and see how it goes. And now it's obviously huge. A friend of mine, did it, this whole thing called motor vlogging. And he was like, you should give it a go. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to. It's kind of sounds a bit nerdy. And then um, I actually got commuting in. I got pulled over a few times for going a bit fast. So I was like, right, well, I need to calm down. So what can I do? I know I'll keep the speed low and just talk about experiences and stuff like that. Because also if you're wearing a helmet camera, you don't want to incriminate yourself by any, uh, any law enforcement officers that may be around. And I think the probably the most infamous thing that happened was when I accidentally took my GSXR down a green lane, which was a genuine accident. And uh, <laughs> it was literally the worst thing I've ever done on a motorcycle. And uh, I don't regret it though, because I think, you know, that brings a lot of people to my channel. Well, listen, you are obviously known for your moaning, but, um, but you've been having a bit of a good time here at Almeria, haven't you? I have been having quite a good time actually, yeah. But uh, there's always stuff to moan about. Like, it's a bit chilly. You know, we've had, um, I've had some bike issues because I rebuilt this bike after yeah, I crashed it. Talk us through the crash at Snetterton, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was me being a bit silly really and uh, I was uh, on slicks and it was wet and uh, I came off on the brakes at 140 and wrecked the bike basically, so. But this is why you have, and we say these things happen for a reason, an incredibly beautiful trick carbon fiber fire blade behind us now. Yes, it is. And, um, and there's quite a nice story behind that actually because Obviously, you know, I, I spoke about it to my subscribers, you know, I've wrecked the bike, I was really gutted about it, even more miserable than normal. And um, I, I sell like stickers and stuff just for a laugh and, and a lot of people kind of chipped in in the community and helped pay for the rebuild of the bike via sort of sticker sales. And some, someone gave me a hundred dollars, which was really nice and just like, you know, good luck, hope, hope it's all well. So it it's, makes a change from horrible internet trolls yeah. to actually cut through that and, and find some really genuine nice people. So. That's a really nice story. So the reason you're here with a nice looking bike in Almeria having fun is because you say the generousness of everyone that watches your channel. Exactly, yeah. And um, and that's kind of what what I'd like to promote and I like to repay people by doing content because obviously I don't get paid, I don't get any money for it, but you know, some people enjoy it. Oh, some people hate it, many people hate it. But you know, my answer to that is you don't have to watch it. So after meeting the Baron, I felt inspired and it was time to head out for a few more laps in the afternoon sun. By well, this point, I've managed to get quite a good feel for the bike, and it had some really strong points and some not so good points as well. The engine, first up, was incredible. Smooth, powerful, revvy, and really torquey as well. It felt like a brand new bike. Well, at this point, I must admit, something didn't quite feel right. The brakes were a bit wooden, and the suspension didn't seem to be giving me that much feedback. Okay, so I'm here with the chief instructor of this uh, event here at Almeria, uh, Neil Hodgson. My friend, uh, obviously you're out there showing people how to ride. Talk us through exactly what, what you're doing on, on this kind of three-day event. Well, first of all, how come Susie's not here? <laughs> it's, it's, the same. it's ridiculous. No one wants to talk to you, Luke. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm busy on these events. Um, I've been doing, since I retired, I've worked with focused events, um, just focused events uh, with the track days. And uh, my job, oh, every day is different. Yeah. Basically, I'm here, I'm, I'm teaching on track. So I could, I could be teaching anyone from a, a racer, to a literally a first timer on track. I'd say I get about an 80% success rate. You know, the, the other 20%, there's not a lot you can do with them. I'd try all my techniques and, you know, try to gain them confidence, but they, the 80% of people do improve. And, and that's why I do this, because it gives you, it's a good feeling. I had a guy today get his knee down for the first time. He's met up. I mean, I remember getting my knee down for the first time in 1990. 
I remember the corner, I was at Aintree. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, for him, course. it's a big thing. It and a and he would not have, that wouldn't have happened if I'd not encouraged him and kept saying, look, you're safe, mate. Your riding style's good. Lean the bike over. You're going to be OK. I've been bimbling around, obviously, on our ZX6R today. It's got lots of trick parts in it. You uh, took it out for a bit of a blast. You're putting a 152 on it. So it, it's obviously quite a capable bike. What did you think? I actually, I really enjoyed it. You know, first and foremost, I set off on it and straight away it just felt right. You know what I mean? Um, what unfortunately what happens then from a rider's point of view is you always focus on the negatives because yeah. that's what jumps out at, at, at you, you know. So the brakes were poor, which I was surprised at. They on felt a, on or off a bit, weren't they? Yeah, and, and just a very wooden feeling, you know. If, I, if you squeeze the lever harder, you didn't stop quicker, which was not a great feeling. That jumped out at me. Yeah. Um, the power jumped out at me in a positive way. It was yeah. so smooth. And I said, what have you done to that? It just feels incredibly smooth. Yeah. And the, the front forks didn't feel great. Just didn't, it didn't feel like the front wheel was following the road as it should. All in all, I enjoyed it. Like, I only did two flying laps, but a 52 is not uh, setting the world alight by a, a, any means around here, but um, it's not a bad lap time. It was, it was only just quicker than mine, I'll say. Two tens. Yeah, two yeah, tens, two tens it, quicker, yeah. that's all. Well, listen, thanks for putting it through its paces. I know uh, people want to go back out with you now and get some more of your time. So, Neil, listen, thanks for a brilliant few days as well, and uh, have a good time. My pleasure, as always. So if you want to head out on European Track Day, you can find out more on our website, bikeworld.co.uk. But it's also your lucky day because we've got a chance for you to win a trip to Almeria. Right then, it is competition time. How would you like to spend four days riding on track at the incredible Almeria circuit thanks to the guys at Focused Events, just like I did in this week's show? Well, how about if we also throw in some very special riding coaching from none other than Neil Hodgson as well? Transfers, hotels and all of that will be taken care of by the guys at Focused Events. All you need to sort is flights, travel insurance, some spending money and of course you need to ensure you have a full bike licence. To win this incredible prize worth over £640, simply answer this question. In which country is the Almeria circuit? Is it A. Spain, B. England or C. Scotland? To enter call 0901 061 6000. Calls cost £1 from BT Landlines, calls from other networks may be higher and calls from mobiles will be considerably more. Or text bike followed by your answer A, B or C to 66010. Text cost £1 plus the cost of one standard network rate message. You can also enter via post and for details of the competition head to bikeworld.co.uk forward slash competition. The competition is open to UK residents only and entries must be 18 years or over. Entries made after lines close midnight on Wednesday the 22nd of January 2014 will not be counted but may still be charged. So that's it for this show. On the next episode, Susie will be out in Portugal testing out Kawasaki's first ever scooter, the J300. And in the meantime, if you'd like to keep up to date with what we're doing, just head to our website, bikeworld.co.uk.